OU students head home for Thanksgiving break, gas prices plummet as the holiday season approaches, and CBD sales are booming in the Sooner State. This is OU Nightly. Hello and thanks for joining us for OU Nightly. I'm Sam Brown. And I'm Ashley Eddy. Thanksgiving will be one of the ho busiest holiday seasons and this year will be no different. OU Nightly's Bailey Bates has more on what drivers can expect at the pump. Thanksgiving means turkey, travel and traffic. AAA predicts that 48.5 million Americans will hit the roads this holiday weekend. During the holiday season, I tend to go home a lot more. There's a lot more family activities going on. One thing travelers can be thankful for this Thanksgiving are plunging gas prices. As of today, the national average for a gallon of regular is $2.62, down seven cents per gallon in the last week. In some parts of the country, you can find gas for under $2, including right here in Norman, Oklahoma. Check out this 7-Eleven. And this on cue is $1.99, and Valero is $1.97. I uh, love it because it saves me a lot of money. Yeah, I plan on filling up my car once I get off work because the prices I'm sure are going to go up maybe in a couple days. Oklahoma has seen gas prices decrease significantly, 10 cents this past week alone, and is one of the states with a top monthly decrease at 36 cents. A recent drop in crude oil price is causing the fall at the pump. Analysts say prices are likely to fall further as we go into December. Bailey Bates, OU Nightly. Before setting out for the Thanksgiving weekend, AAA recommends motorists to download the free AAA mobile app to find the lowest gas prices in the area. Well, the holiday season is just ramping up and the Will Rogers World Airport is expecting a record-setting travel season. Passenger numbers are up 11% from 2017, meaning travelers can expect larger crowds and longer lines. One of the best things people can do before they come out to the airport, especially during a, a busy holiday travel season, is just prepare for a, a few things that they normally wouldn't see at the airport, which would be very long security lines, possibly long lines along the curbside where uh, we don't allow parking, uh, where they're picking up their passengers and things like that. More information on parking and flights can be found at www.flyokc.com. Well, after an absolutely freezing weekend, it's actually kind of nice out there today. Yeah, it is. Um, meteorologist Jordan Overton joins us now. And Jordan, how long is that sunny weather going to last? That's right. So this week is going to be fantastic. And on that holiday travel we were just talking about, I'm going to have a full update on what we can expect across the entire country coming up in just a bit. But right now, it's beautiful out there. Um, conditions are fantastic on our skyline cam. Temperatures right now are sitting in the 40s and 50s. They've been warming up a lot. Now coming up, we're going to be talking about your Thanksgiving forecast. We're going to talk about how much we're going to warm up the next few days. I've actually got some 60s in the forecast. That's all coming up, but for now, back to you guys. Thanks, Jordan. CBD is becoming increasingly popular across the U.S. and shops have been popping up all over the Sooner State. Oh, Nightly Shireen Hashem joins us now live outside of Canafe, the first CBD cafe in Oklahoma. Shireen. I'm here outside of Canafe right here on Campus Corner. While CBD sales have been skyrocketing, people are intrigued to see the different forms it can come in, such as in foods and drinks, just like this tea. I sat down with the owner as well as cook and chef to see their insights about CBD products. A study conducted by Remedy Review listed Oklahoma as number one for cannabis oil or CBD usage in the United States. The cannabis derivative is best known to help treat pain, anxiety, and insomnia. CBD is most common to come in the form of oils, pills, and gummies, but this shop is different. Canafe infuses CBD into different foods and drinks. Really, we wanted to make sure that everybody understands that we're wanting to uh, add that into the food and drinks that, uh, that we're going to take every day and it's a little bit of a different, uh, different paradigm than just taking a, taking a dose. After medical marijuana was legalized in Oklahoma, CBD sales increased. I would say that's in regard to it being more 
prevalent in today's society. More information is coming out about it. People are more open to consuming it because they're aware that it doesn't affect them like THC does psychologically. And if they're aware that that will help them, one, not being consuming opiates or any other large pharmaceutical, then they can transition away from things that do have addictive properties uh, that help their ailments to things that don't have addictive properties that help their ailments. There are more than 10 CBD shops in Norman alone. Canafe's owner says his shop specifically provides a relaxing environment where people can come eat, drink, and even listen to live music. Canafe is open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day right here on Buchanan Avenue on Campus Corner. Shireen Hashem, OU Nightly. All right. Thank you, Shireen. The Oklahoma Medical Marijuana Authority has removed the addresses of growers and processors from its online database in response to security concerns. The authority published this information on October 31st after multiple Open Records Act requests, but several adv advocacy groups were upset over the decision because licensees previously weren't notified. A spokesperson for the authority says the information can be acquired through a public records request, and it's also available through the Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs Control's database. After the wildfire devastation, President Donald Trump surveyed the hardest hit area. Austin Hernandez joins us now in News Center with more information. Austin. Ashley, President Trump visited fire ravaged areas of California and met with people affected by the wildfires. Trump traveled to the mountain town of Paradise where many homes were burned to the ground. But this is very sad to see it. As far as the lives are concerned, uh, nobody knows quite yet. We're up to a certain number, but we have a lot of people that aren't accounted for. And uh, this is the kind of destruction. In fact, they're telling me this is even not as bad as some areas. Some areas are even beyond this. They're just charred. At least 76 people were killed in the campfire, and 1,300 are still missing, making it the most destructive and deadly wildfire in California state history. Former Democratic candidate for governor Stacey Abrams plans to file a federal lawsuit challenging the way Georgia conducts its elections. The lawsuit will be based on the feedback her campaign has received from voters alleging problems at nearly every step of the process. Abrams said her belief is that her campaign built a solid case that will yield a real change in substantive reforms to elections in the state of Georgia through the administration of this case. CNN White House correspondent Jim Acosta's press pass is no longer in jeopardy. The White House says now it will not try to have the pass revoked at the expiration of the 14-day temporary restraining order. Friday, the White House sent Acosta a letter outlining a preliminary, a preliminary decision to suspend his pass again after a judge restored it. CNN responded by asking the U.S. District Court for another emergency hearing. The White House says its lawyers advised the hard pass be returned and legal action be halted. The statement also says the president agrees with the decision. And Nissan chairman Carlos Ghosn has been arrested in Japan after an internal investigation revealed several acts of misconduct. Back to you on the studio. All right. Thank you, Austin. Oklahoma prepares to remember a legend honoring his life in Broken Arrow later this week. Details on the memorial for country music star Roy Clark coming up. And how some OU students are playing a unique role when it comes to giving back this holiday season. When OU Nightly continues. OU students have a lot to be thankful for this holiday season, and OU Nightly's Olivia Whitehead found out what exactly makes them feel grateful. She joins us with more in the E-Report. In between the pumpkins coming down and the Christmas trees going up is the season of giving. And while most look forward to stuffing their face with turkey, it's also a time to reflect on what makes you thankful. So today I went around campus to ask people what Thanksgiving really means to them. Thanksgiving to me it's just like a time to be thankful and a time to be with your friends and family and the people that mean or mean the most to you. I mean nothing's promised and just be thankful for what you have. Thanksgiving means reunion like um, an occasion where we get to um, just reunite with other family members and celebrate our family first and how lucky we are to be in our shoes because I believe that we are always luckier than someone else. And one class takes part in the season of giving through a unique way of community service. Price College of Business's First Fidelity Integrated Business Corps is a program offering 
hands-on, real-world experience to students as they start their own business. Students create, produce, market, and sell products such as hats, water bottles, and windbreakers. The money goes to the charity of their choice, and they work additional hours volunteering with local organizations. And continuing the season of giving, Kanye is far from being heartless after a generous donation to a guard's family. Rapper Kanye West donated $150,000 to a memorial fundraising site for a Chicago security guard shot last week by an officer. 26-year-old Jamel Robertson was detaining a suspected gunman at the venue where he worked when he was shot by an officer, according to a federal lawsuit. According to witnesses, the officers gave Robinson multiple verbal commands to drop the gun, and now the officer who killed Robinson is on administrative paid leave while the police department investigates. The GoFundMe balances over $300 thousand dollars as of this afternoon well you guys there's a lot to be thankful for this thanksgiving season very true yeah, yeah. absolutely it's no doubt so much better to you know give than receive so. exactly I the like generous that. donations yeah. students helping out it's really great so yeah great. yeah awesome. thank you so much olivia. thanks olivia thank you all right well a public memorial service is planned wednesday here in oklahoma for singer and guitarist roy clark who headlined the tv show hee haw for nearly a quarter century a celebration of life service will take place at Rima Bible Church in Broken Arrow. The thousand dreams I dreamed, the splendid things I planned, I always built a last on weak and shifting sand. Clark was 85 years old when he died last week in his home in Tulsa after complications with pneumonia. Clark played the banjo, fiddle, harmonica, and was a member of the Grand Ole Opry. Well, you've heard it several times by now. There's only three days left until Thanksgiving. But what is that weather going to look like come Thursday? That's what everyone is asking. And lucky for you, Jordan Overton's standing by with the answers. That's right. I've got the answers to your Thanksgiving forecast. But you got to stick around to find them out. We'll see you in a minute. Welcome back to OU Nightly. I'm Drew Nobert, Tim and Victor Weather. So right now across the country, we've got what I'd like to call a train of cold fronts off to our east. So one, two, three. Those are all moving off systems with it. There's some snow behind it, rain along it. You might think, what about Thanksgiving? How is that going to impact our Thanksgiving plan? So the good news is these are going to keep moving off to the east. All right. What we have moving in is high pressure. So here we go. Thanksgiving travel. This is for Wednesday. So the green areas, no impacts. Yellow areas are some impacts. And the red areas is major impact. So Wednesday, we've got our high. It's going to basically be sitting over most of the country. No impacts for us. Then we go off to the east, to the west, actually. And this low here is really the main thing we're going to watch. Off to our east, northeast, this system's going to keep moving off. We're not going to see impacts for Thanksgiving. But on Wednesday, we'll see pretty good, not very much for Oklahoma. Then we get into Thursday, Thanksgiving Day. Here we go. All right, so that system inches closer. Impacts are a little bit more widespread in the northwest. Here for Oklahoma, happy Thanksgiving. Conditions fantastic. High pressure remains in control. And off to our east. Now watch this system right here. This is low. It's kind of right below the banner here. Here it comes. There it is. Friday, we could see some impacts in Norman. We could see some showers as that system moves in and then mainly for the northwest. So the good news is not very many impacts for Oklahoma for Thanksgiving Day, but Friday we could see a few things. But right now across SkyCam Network, it is looking fantastic outside, sitting at 52 degrees with sunny skies across the area. All right, so for tomorrow, the day planner, not liking too bad, going to wrap up around 50 degrees. And then that seven-day forecast, here we go. Tuesday is going to be a fantastic day, sunny skies. Wednesday, warmer with a few clouds around. And then as we get into Thursday, Thanksgiving Day is going to be fantastic. And then for Thanksgiving Day itself, well, let's look it up. Here we go. Not too bad. 42 degrees at 9 o'clock, then 59 in the afternoon and 54, so sunny skies and nice and warm for Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah awesome. Thank, Thank you, Jordan. Thank you so much, Jordan. Well, Oklahoma finished the season unbeaten at home and faces just one more obstacle to get to the Big 12 title game. Tevis Hillis is here with a recap of Saturday's big win over Kansas. The football team had a below average win over KU in their rear view mirror, and the basketball team is off to a flying start with Prairie Bird leading the way. Sports is straight ahead. The final home game at the Palace on the Prairie was not an easy party as expected. The Sooners had to put up a fight against the Kansas Jayhawks, but won 55-40. Madeline Roberts and Josh Calloway have their thoughts on the game. Oklahoma gets it done. They beat the Kansas Jayhawks today on senior night. Mal, it didn't really feel like a win. <laughs> no, it didn't. You know, I thought last week's win over Oklahoma State 
was not a very good win. But this one was even worse. Giving up 40 points to Kansas is not that's exactly not, what you want, especially when you're fighting for a spot in the college. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. When you're trying to pat a CFP resume, mm -hmm. giving up 40 is not exactly what the doctor ordered. What's the doubt? There's, you could, there's a lot to pick from here. I'm going to say how bad the run defense was. You know, going yes. into this game, oh, you had done pretty well against the run. That was the one redeeming quality of the defense. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the secondary had been bad. Quarterbacks were, like, kind of having their way with the secondary. But the run game had been good today. It was not. Puka Williams, 252 yards on the ground, two touchdowns. Just not a good performance from them at all. No, for sure. This is a game that, you know, at the end of the season, when it's Oklahoma versus Michigan or Ohio State, whoever it may be for that last playoff spot, is where you can't really complain. You know, going forward now, West Virginia on a short week. Morgantown, it was really The men's basketball team won at home against the Wofford Terriers, 75-64. With Trey Young in the NBA, a super sophomore has taken the reins. Brady Manick, now going by Prairie Bird, had 18 points and 11 rebounds, helping the Sooners to the win. It's his third time grabbing double-digit rebounds. Four Sooners scored at least 11 points. They will be traveling to the Bahamas this Wednesday to play in a tournament. I'd give up Thanksgiving dinner to be covering. The women took an L against 21st-ranked South Florida, 87-70, but that did not stop Taylor Robertson from getting Big 12 Freshman of the Week. Honors for the second time in a row. Robertson scored 18 points, grabbed 7 rebounds, and dished out 2 assists. The women will all be, also be traveling to the Bahamas for a couple of games, and I'd like to cover that one too. Thanksgiving week means it's time for the fall finale of Sooner Sports Pad. Host Tori Johnson has a preview from Studio D. Tori? Thanks, Tevis. Tonight we'll have our semester-ending best of show for you live on Fox Sports Oklahoma at 7.30. We'll take a look back at the amazing season Kyler Murray has given Sooner fans and have a second showing of a very special Sooner sports tradition. And, of course, we'll throw in our favorite viral videos. Tevis, as if t you missed us tonight, you can catch us again on the rebroadcast tomorrow on OUTV right after our newscast. Russell Westbrook skipped Saturday night's game in Phoenix for a pretty cute reason. Westbrook and his wife Nina were busy welcoming their healthy twin girls during the Thunder's 110-100 win. Russ posted this photo yesterday of his daughters Sky and Jordan. Moving on to some bull, the famous Texas mascot Bevo made a huge announcement on his Twitter today. Due to the Jayhawks' no live mascot policy, Bevo will not be allowed to travel to the Kansas with the team. This is the second time in 73 years that Bevo will not be at Thanksgiving this week's game. I'm not going to lie, I had no idea Kansas even had like a live mascot <laughs> policy. Yeah, come on. What, what about that? I'm excited for the game. So we'll see how it plays out, and then we'll figure out who's going to the Big 12 Championship. Yeah, and then, and then Texas, Kansas, and OU West Virginia. All yeah. back to figure back. Figure it all out. to see how it all plays out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Tevis. Tevis. Coming up, shake up your Thanksgiving meal this year. New ice cream flavors out just in time for the holiday. I'm Claire Easley here at the OU Nightly Update Desk. Breaking news, there have been reports of an active shooter near a Chicago hospital around 3 this afternoon. Fire officials made the call to send at least 15 ambulances to the scene. It has been released a police officer and potentially six other victims were injured at Mercy Hospital on the south side of Chicago. The officer is said to be in critical condition but receiving excellent care. For more on the story, follow OU Nightly on social media. Thank you, Claire. And with Thanksgiving almost here, it's time to figure out what food to bring to the family feast. And if you can't decide whether to bring a side dish or a dessert, how about you bring both? Yeah, check out this new handcrafted flavored ice cream from Salt and Straw. The flavors include roasted cranberry sauce sorbet, sweet potato with maple pecans, and spice goat cheese and pumpkin pie. They even tried out a new flavor called Salted Caramel Thanksgiving Turkey. I'm not going to lie, I don't think I would try, you try any it? of those. Hey, no, it not might be not something to just bring and talk about with the fam. And the, the most I'll try is the sorbet. You, you lost me at goat cheese and pumpkin pie. <laughs> Maybe so. Interesting. But let's talk about the weather. Let's How talk about, about the weather. So yeah, let's the Thanksgiving day forecast. Thanksgiving day forecast really is fantastic. Um, we're going to see temperatures reach 59 in the afternoon. The winds are going to be a little strong from the south. We're going to have those warm southerly winds coming in. But then looking after that, really conditions aren't going to be too bad. Some showers on Friday, but otherwise it's a great seven-day forecast. 
All that's right. awesome. So Looks good. So get outside with the fam and enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. enjoy it while it lasts because that right. comes winter. Right. All right, thank you so much for watching OU Nightly, brought to you by the Gaylor College at the University of Oklahoma. We'll see you back here live tomorrow night at 4.30. Have a great evening. Good night.